Hey there, this is Carrie Clark with SpeechAndLanguageKids.com and the Speech Therapy Solution. Today I am answering a question about therapy ideas for three-year-old fluency clients. So this is a three-year-old child who is working on stuttering. So I have a, another video in this library that is about if you should choose indirect or direct therapy techniques or if you should do kind of a wait-and-see approach for preschoolers with stuttering problems. Um, so this is going to give you some ideas for indirect therapy and ideas for direct therapy based on whether or not you chose to do direct or indirect. So here are some ideas for indirect first. So for indirect therapy, the first thing that you can do is start off talking about fast speech and slow speech. So this is a game that I created that has a picture for fast, which is a girl running, and a picture for slow, which is a turtle. And then it has room to either take an arrow and point to which one you're demonstrating, or there are little stars that come off so you can give the child a star and they can put it on the appropriate side. So what I would do with this is I'd start with having the, um, I would, I would have my own speech be either fast or slow and have the child tell me if it was a fast speech or slow speech. So maybe I would get some Arctic cards or some um, verb cards and say, she is running. And I would either say it really quickly or I would say it really slowly and have the child identify which is fast and which is slow. Now you can also, after you get the, the child pretty good at that, you can have them practice it. So, okay, I want you to tell me this sentence, but I want you to tell it to me very fast and then have them say it very slow so that they can practice the difference between fast and slow speech. Then after you get through this part, then you can have the student practice slow, smooth, exaggerated speech in different activities. So maybe you're sitting down with those cards again and you're gonna say, okay, let's talk about what's happening in these pictures and we're gonna use our slow, smooth speech. So you would say, she is running. Or you could do a game like Go Fish where there's something that the child needs to say each time and you would have the child say, do you have a pizza? So they would use their slow, exaggerated speech to demonstrate that. What this is gonna do is it's going to give the child a basis for how to sound smooth and give them that feeling of what it feels like to be smooth. And that will either help them get their normal speech more smooth or it will help you once you decide to go ahead and do direct therapy because they will already have that basis of what it feels like to be smooth. Okay, so then if you're gonna work on direct therapy, this would be when you're actually starting to address with the child um, that they are having some disfluencies. So I like to use the bumpy and smooth um, words to describe fluent and, and disfluent speech, especially with preschoolers. So on this page, I have a bumpy ball at the top and a smooth ball on the other side. And again, I have an arrow that I can move back and forth or little stars that we can add on. So again, I would start with having them identify bumpy versus smooth in my speech. So I would say some, I would say a sentence and then I would have them tell me if it was bumpy or smooth. So I'm gonna use the same kinds of disfluency that the child is using. So if they're using sound repetitions, I'm doing sound repetitions. If they're doing prolongations, I do prolongations. So I might say the g -g 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 girl is running. And then I would have the child tell me, oh, that was a bumpy one. Yep, there's bumpy. <laughs> That's a bumpy one as opposed to a smooth one. And then I'd say, okay, let me try again. Let me do a smooth one. And I'd do the smooth one for them. So um, you have them identify it in your own speech. And then you want the child to practice bumpy and smooth speech. So basically they're doing a um, controlled stutter. So they're going, to be con they're going to be stuttering. And then they're going to be saying the same sentence again without the stutter. So this teaches them how to control it a little better and makes it less of a scary thing because they know that they have a little control over it. So you would have them say, okay, I want you to say, she is running and the first time I want you to say it bumpy so you're gonna have to teach the child how to do bumps so <clears throat> again teach them the ones that they're already doing so if the child does sound repetitions say okay we're gonna make a bump on girl so we're gonna say good 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 girl and then have them practice that and make a sentence where they say the good 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 girl is running okay so have them practice it bumpy and then identify it as bumpy and then say okay now we're gonna say it smoothly and have them say it with a smooth voice okay so you're having them practice and demonstrate bumpy versus smooth speech. The next step after that would be to identify the child's speech as bumpy or smooth during play. So while you're playing with the child, if you hear them say something smoothly, then you say, oh, that was very smooth. If you hear them say something bumpy, you say, wow, that one was bumpy. You're not a, a, um, applying any judgment to it. You're not saying, oh, that was terrible because it was bumpy. You're just saying, oh, that one was bumpy, that one was smooth. That way the child starts to I identify the difference between them, but she doesn't develop any negative feelings towards the stuttering. 
that's what you want to avoid because if they get those negative feelings, then they're going to have more trouble um, being able to keep it under control in the future because they're going to be afraid of it. So you're just saying, oh, that one was bumpy, that one was smooth. Okay, and then once the child's able to kind of, I guess, understand the difference between bumpy and smooth as you're identifying it, then you can start asking her questions if her speech was bumpy or smooth. So let's say she says something and you say, hmm, was that a bumpy one or a smooth one? What do you think? And see if she can think back and say, oh, that one was bumpy or no, that one was smooth. And if the child has trouble with this, you can just record her and then play it back and then have her tell you if it was bumpy or smooth based on the recording. Okay, so that's one kind of line of um, approach for direct therapy. The other one would be response contingency therapy, and this is um, a type of therapy that has actually shown really good results in research studies. There was a meta-analysis done not too long ago on fluency therapies for preschoolers, and response contingency actually had the best outcome of any of them. So response contingency is you're going to praise and reinforce any smooth speech that happens, you know, just during play or while you're talking with the child. And then if they do have disfluencies, you immediately stop them and provide direct corrective feedback. So before they even get through the sentence, you say, oh, that one was bumpy, let's try again. So you're basically stopping them mid stutter and kind of refocusing their attention and seeing if they can get it back out the second time without the disfluencies. Now I know this kind of seems backwards to what a lot of us were taught in grad school. Because a lot of us were taught, oh, don't draw attention to it and you know try to try to keep it easy. Um, so this is kind of a different approach than, especially than what I was trained on, but it is an approach that is having a lot of success with a lot of kids. So I do have a link in the uh, show notes there. You can go on there and look at that link. And there is a link to my post all about response contingency. So you can learn more about that. As always, watch your students for signs that the therapy is working or not working or making things better or worse. So if you start doing response contingency with a preschooler and you see that they're freaking out and getting really stressed about it, obviously that's not the approach for that kiddo. So you stop and you do something different. Likewise, if you start with indirect therapy and their stuttering just continues to get worse and it's not getting any better, then maybe you need to move to, to a more direct approach, maybe even response contingency. So those are some options for you. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below and I will get back to those as soon as possible. Thanks so much and have a great day.